November 14th marks the 20th anniversary of the most consequential UFO incident in modern history. U.S. Navy aviators were sent to intercept an otherworldly object that, quote, took off like a bullet fired from a gun two decades later. The Pentagon still can't explain what it was, but its impact still being felt. Our chief investigator, George Knapp, has more on that story tonight, George. It, it was dubbed the Tic Tac UFO because its shape and color resembled a popular breath mint, but that mint was 45 feet across and it was detected by the Navy not just once, but dozens of times in November 2004. A now famous video of the Tic Tac recorded by Navy pilots was initially buried by the military, but a clandestine investigation based here in Las Vegas eventually documented why this encounter was so revolutionary. During a two-week period in November 2004, the world's most sophisticated sensor systems attached to the powerful USS Nimitz carrier group were befuddled by repeated cat-and-mouse type incursions of unknown objects off the coast of Southern California, objects that were detected one second, then gone the next. On November 14th, radar operators finally got a lock on one object, later dubbed the Tic Tac, and sent Top Gun pilot David Fravor to investigate. No, Fravor, you know, the commander of the famed Black Aces Squadron sped through the skies in his F-18 and could not believe what he was seeing. Years was later, his opinion has not changed. The video. the video was taken by a crew after us when we came back in Atlanta. There are four of us. We chased it visually, and I looked at it for over five minutes. I watched it moving around. I watched it interact with me. I cut across the circle when it disappeared. So it's not a bird. It's not a weather balloon. It had no wings. It had no rotors. There was no wash. I mean, I've heard all the Internet, you know, people of what it is. Most of them have no idea what they're talking about. And the four of us will, to this day, tell you that we have no idea what we saw uh, as far as where it was from or what it was, but it had incredible, incredible performance characteristics that were well beyond brand new Super Hornets right out of the factory, which is what the jets were we were flying. Fravor says the Tic Tac took off like a bullet shot from a gun. Commander Chad Underwood was in the second F-18 sent after the Tic Tac. Equipment on his plane recorded the grainy image from an infrared sensor. Underwood says there's a second recording that's never been released. He adds the Tic Tac engaged in active jamming. I did get jamming cues on my radar tape, and you can see cues of jamming on both your radar and your flare tape. Accounts vary about what happened to the recordings afterward. The encounter was not investigated by the Navy and wasn't sent up the chain. A few years later, a bootleg of the recording appeared online but didn't make much of a splash. A more detailed article by a former Navy pilot appeared later in an online aviation publication without much notice. Then in December 2017, the Tic Tac made worldwide news when it was the centerpiece of a front page story in the New York Times. The article revealed the existence of previously unknown Department of Defense programs looking into UFOs. The Tic Tac and Commander Fravor's account were viewed as solid proof that genuine unknowns have continued to perplex the world's most powerful military. That is still the case today. The Times article turned the UFO subject on its head. Other mainstream media started looking into the cover-up. Members of Congress asked questions and demanded briefings. The public showed renewed interest in a subject long dismissed as nonsense. Veteran journalist Ralph Blumenthal admits it was a tough sell Anything to get his TV? editors to run that story. This everything was, you know, was was documented, uh, but it was still a difficult topic for the Times to, to grapple with. And the Times has a, a history of being very skeptical of UFOs, as you know. The larger story was an expose of a previously unknown investigation of UFO encounters within the U.S. military, dubbed ATIP, described as a program by some or a working group by others. A career intelligence officer named Lou Elizondo, who left his Pentagon position in October 2017, was instrumental in getting the Tic Tac video into the hands of the New York Times. He said this in January 2018 when we asked about the Tic Tac Nimitz encounters. Are there other similar cases still? hidden in military files? But there are many, many Nimitz incidences that are equally compelling, that are that are told from the from the eyes of individuals just like Commander Dave Fravor. Documents surfaced later showing Elizondo had taken formal steps to get the Tic Tac video and others released to the public. Another former intelligence insider, Chris Mellon, admits he put the videos into the hands of the New York Times. The subsequent wave of publicity led to the creation of a new Department of Defense investigation, the UAP Task Force. That organization, headed by a veteran intelligence pro named Jay Stratton, quite 
quietly compiled and analyzed other astonishing UFO videos and cases, a few of which eventually surfaced in media reports, including ours. In his very first on-camera interview, Stratton told us a major goal of his task force was to reduce the stigma so that more military pilots would be willing to report their encounters. So what does the Pentagon know about the Tic Tac today? Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, who headed up a subsequent UFO investigation called Arrow, claims that pretty much all UFO cases can be explained and that the Tic Tac could be explained too if only there was more data. But there is. What Kirkpatrick and others chose to overlook is that a highly detailed analysis of the Tic Tac and its capabilities was written. It was the very first case investigated by a hush-hush program within the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and based in, of all places, Las Vegas. It had yet another odd acronym, ALSAP. It was completely UFO related. So contrary to what the public has been told recently, the U.S. government knows quite a bit about the Tic Tac. One goal of the secret studies was to eventually build one of these things of our own. Next, we'll unveil details about what was learned about the amazing Tic Tac and its performance capabilities. So I think I have an idea of what the answer to this question is, but I, will there be additional congressional hearings? There about will this? be, yeah. Supposedly by the end of the year, we'll have a hearing in the Senate, which will call forward people associated with Arrow, ask them how it's going, not very well. <laughs> and then in the House, they're going to have a number of witnesses, three or more, November 13th. They want direct whistleblowers. People have had sort of hands-on experience mm. with this, or scientists. So we'll see. Okay. It's exciting. T Tic Tac's greatest hits, as we said there. Yeah. <laughs> Can you walk us through the water elements? Something under the water there? Can you expand on that, George? So Dave Fravor, the yeah. pilot who chased it and encountered it for more than five minutes, said something was under the water, something really big, about the size of a 747. Wow. It was causing the water to churn. It was as if the Tic Tac was docking and interacting with something under there. The submarines in the area did not detect it, but it has cloaking capabilities as the Tic Tac itself did. So a lot more to come on that. I just heard Ted say, wow. I imagine <laughs> some of our viewers as well. Doing also, I understand thing. we can Netflix and chill with George soon. Yes, a uh, big debut coming up November 8th. More on that next I'll time I'll come talk to you about it. Yes. Yeah, look forward to it. Thanks, yeah. George. Now over